Hello, I'm Tom Mintier. The Space Shuttle Atlantis is poised on Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. And you can see here it is bathed in floodlights for a very unusual nighttime launch. It was scheduled to go in about one minute, but because of a problem they had earlier in the day, it's going to slide for about 10 minutes. We, of course, will have the liftoff of Atlantis from the Kennedy Space Center as it occurs in about 10 minutes from now. Please stay with us, but Inside Business is next here on CNN. Already being pummeled by Democrats. This is CNN Breaking News. Hello, I'm Tom Mintier. NASA is preparing to put Atlantis into space. The countdown clock is running. It is uh, under uh, four minutes right now. Here you can see Atlantis as it sits on pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. It's only the seventh time in NASA history that they have launched at night in 44 missions so far. Uh, Atlantis is making its 10th flight since its maiden voyage all the way back in 1985. The primary objective of this mission is the deployment of a $300 million defense support satellite that will be sent out into orbit from the cargo bay about six hours or so after the launch. And they are uh, not really experiencing any problems outside of one minor little glitch where they had a small minor leak of the oxygen replenishment. Uh, CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, John, the uh, clock seems to be working well tonight. That's right, Tom, and it ought to be one spectacular liftoff. It is an absolutely picture-perfect night, uh, to use the cliche, up and down the east coast of the United States uh, for several hundred miles. We ought to get a really good look at uh, Atlantis as it uh, rockets into space. It's kind of interesting, Tom. This is uh, going to be the end of an era, actually, for NASA. This is the last flight of 91, and talking to many of the NASA officials the last few weeks, they tell us that in the years ahead, 92 is going to be a turning point. Uh, less manpower, less money, a streamlined shuttle program, yet uh, four orbiters and more flights. We're going to be seeing a different space program in the years ahead uh, as they try to streamline uh, now some five years after the accident uh, that, of course, destroyed Challenger. They think that they can do away with much of the paperwork uh, and redundancy that uh, they had built into the program. So uh, this uh, certainly is going to be an interesting night here at the Kennedy Space Center, Tom. Most definitely is, and uh, we should point out this is the sixth launch and the final one uh, of 1991. Uh, uh, they will go into a, a long Christmas holiday. The, uh, you can see here, this is uh, the control room at the Kennedy Space Center where they are watching uh, a lot of gauges and dials, uh, making sure that all pressure remains up. Uh, the auxiliary power units uh, started five minutes before uh, scheduled liftoff. They do have uh, about four extra minutes to play with there should there be a problem in the last uh, 30 seconds or so. They can, uh, they can hold it and continue on. They're coming up now on one minute in this uh, what was once a secret mission, a military mission, uh, normally uh, when the clock started at nine minutes, uh, that is when they used to allow us to uh, know when things were going on. They are now under one minute. Uh, let's listen in now at the Kennedy Space Center. That will help suppress the sound energy and the shock of the seven million pounds of thrust produced at launch. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. T-minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's four redundant computers have primary control of critical functions. 20. Fifteen. T-minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have a go for engine start. Six, five, four, three, Two, one, liftoff of Atlantis and the six-man crew on a Department of Defense flight. Roger all, Atlantis. Houston now controlling. Atlantis is completely rolling over to the proper position for its climb to a 28.5 degree inclination orbit. main engines now throttling back to 70% as Atlantis prepares to pass through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure. The 
planet's speed is now 1,000 miles an hour, altitude 34,000 feet, downrange from Kennedy Space Center, four nautical miles. Atlantis Houston, go with throttle up. Roger, go with throttle up. Three engines now back, operating at 104% of rated capacity. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Atlantis Houston, com check, UHF only. Loud and clear, John. You're loud and clear also. Altitude now 127,000 feet. Atlantis speed 2,725 miles an hour. Downrange from Kennedy Space Center, 25 nautical miles. Good SRB set. Roger. Good Mikos. Three engines continuing to operate well at 104% of rated capacity. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Altitude now 198,000 feet. Velocity 3,068 miles an hour. Two engine band jewel. Roger, and performance nominal. Nominal. Those calls indicate Atlantis's performance so far has been as planned, and that Atlantis could now perform a transatlantic landing at Banjul, the Gambia, on only two engines if one were to fail. However, that, however, all three engines continuing to operate well at 104%. Atlantis altitude is 286,000 feet. Velocity now 4,200. Atlantis 286,000 feet. The white dot you see in the center of your screen is the orbiter by itself, propelled by its three main engines that is, as it is heading towards orbit. The solid rocket boosters have already fallen away harmlessly and are on their way down to the Atlantic Ocean where they will be retrieved. Uh, once again, it was only the seventh time that they had ever launched at night, and it was indeed spectacular. CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center, and uh, it lit up the entire area as the SRBs ignited, John. It certainly did. It's, it provides quite a glow. We probably wouldn't have needed lights out here to do these live stand-ups uh, when Atlantis uh, lifted off, and you can still see it out there. It's a, a dot in the sky heading east and... Uh, and south of us here, I'm sure, particularly down around the South Florida area, they had a tremendous view of the uh, the shuttle lifting off this evening. It uh, it went like clockwork just about all day, except for that one minor glitch that they had with the uh, liquid oxygen replenishment valve. Other than that, uh, the problem that they had last week with the navigational system on the booster rocket, which is attached uh, to the cargo, to that satellite which is in the cargo bay, that was all sorted out, no problems at all with that. So uh, tonight's liftoff with the uh, six-man crew on this 10-day Defense Department mission uh, on the way, Tom. John, it's pretty amazing when you look at this picture of the long-range tracking cameras that, uh, that you can still see that bright dot in the center of your screen uh, that uh, there were some clouds at about 22,000 feet, but uh, they seem to be not hampering this night launch at all. I can't remember a night launch where it wouldn't be by hidden behind the clouds by now. Yeah, it was absolutely crystal clear here, except for those few little puffs of clouds that you mentioned, and uh, makes you uh, wish that all the launches were at night. Uh, you certainly don't get a, as good a view of the shuttle for as long a period of time as you do tonight. I think it's just about out of sight now, uh, but it was absolutely fabulous. Tom. All right, John. For uh, those, because it did slide a little bit, for someone who may have joined us a little late because uh, they started the clock a little bit late. We're going to show you uh, from the launch pad again at 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. 
Atlantis on its way to a 10-day military mission.